Hello, coming to you from St. Martin de Porres. Today we celebrate a special memorial, which is the memorial of Saints Cornelius and Cyprian. They were martyrs in the early church. And so I thought that for today, we focus on the meaning and the role of a martyr in the life of our faith, because a martyr is one who bears witness to the gospel, even to the point of shedding their blood. And there's no greater act of love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. One's friends being first and foremost, the great savior and brother of mankind, Jesus himself, us laying down our lives for him, but also us laying down our lives for the brethren, for our fellow brother and sister Christians. So for us to look at these martyrs, we're looking at one, we're looking at people who had the courage to lay down their life for their friends, Christ and all the holy ones in him. They bore witness even to the point of shedding their blood. The word martyr actually means witness. It comes from a Greek word, martyr, and it's pronounced almost the same way. And it literally means witness. So whenever we hear of the feasts of the martyrs and whenever we commemorate them, we are commemorating those who were a bright light enshrined in the forefronts of the house of God, the temple of God, the church that illuminates the whole household with the light of Christ. You see, whenever we commemorate a martyr, we're not commemorating a good work. This is a key point. We are not commemorating a good work. When you think of the Old Testament, people would do good deeds according to the law of Moses. But we know from St. Paul that those works of the law, or the lack of observing the works of the law, had no bearing on one's salvation. In fact, the law only showed us how inept we were to fulfill the justice of God. You know, the justice of God is fulfilled by his perfect and beloved son, Jesus. So when he commands us, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect, our, our savior is saying to us that you cannot be perfect in and of yourself. The mystery of perfection is found only in the anointed one, only in Christ. And it's only by union with him that we can be regarded as just, that we can be regarded as perfect, not in our own right as if we merited it, but rather because we are one with him and everything that is his becomes ours. So now bringing this to the martyrs, any act for the faith, especially the act of shedding one's blood for Christ and his brethren. That is not a good work like the works of the law. What does Jesus say to the apostles and the early disciples when he prophesies that they will come to you and they will seize you and beat you and they will even kill you? Because you honor the Christ, because you follow him. But when you are to give an account on that day, don't pre-write your script. Rather, the Spirit of God will be speaking through you to them. The Spirit of my Heavenly Father will tell you what to say. In other words... The act of martyrdom, the act of bearing witness to the faith, to the point of share, shedding one's blood, is nothing other than the work of the Spirit in an individual who has been open to this. You see what's happening? In other words, 
we are sharing in it. There's always a human element to it. So without us saying, yes, I have come to do your will, this work cannot be possible. But it is the Holy Spirit who's inspiring the martyrs to give this witness. It is the Holy Spirit who's strengthening them in their resolve to persevere to the ends. He who perseveres to the ends will be saved. And so this is an important point that the work of the martyrs is nothing other than the work of Christ, the work of the spirit of the anointed one. In a way, it's for this very reason that we were given the seal of the Holy Spirit in confirmation. They were very conscious of this in the ancient church. That we were filled with the gifts of the Holy Spirit in confirmation, the sevenfold gifts, so that we could bear witness. And if it came to the point of shedding one's blood, one would be empowered by the Spirit to do so. But that martyrdom of blood, that witness even to the point of death, is something that arises from the gift of the Spirit in confirmation. I want to emphasize that. That it's because you have been sealed with God's Spirit that you can bear witness before Him in the world. And it was that same Spirit filling the martyrs because of their confirmation that empowered them to give this witness, this ultimate witness, for Christ, for their brethren, to the world. And when the Roman crowds would see this fidelity of the ancient martyrs, some of them were inspired to convert. So that witness of the Spirit goes into the crowd and he moves the hearts of stone in the crowd, shattering them to pieces and realizing, making them realize that there is a better way, that there is a path of life, eternal life in Christ. So truly, as the early church writer Tertullian would say, this the seed, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of Christians. In other words, they sowed a permanent witness by their blood into the ground. And from that came the crop of new Christians. As the verse of the psalm goes, they go out, they go out full of sorrow. They come back, they come back full of song, bearing their sheaves. In other words, they might go out with tears for sowing, sowing their blood, witnessing to that point of suffering. But then when they're in the heavenly kingdom, they come back, they come back, bearing their sheaves, what they sowed in righteousness, the Spirit harvested. That is the great dignity of the ancient martyrs. And for our purposes today, we have a unique way of applying this. Think about this. When the time of persecution faded, in the ancient church. Many were disturbed. Many Christians were disturbed because they thought we don't have the honor of martyrdom anymore. But some were quick, some of the bishops were quick to remind their faithful that we are supposed to bear witness no matter what the circumstances, no matter if that witness shed, uh, uh, ends in the shedding of blood or not. So in other words, we're constantly called to live a martyric life, 
a life of witnessing to the gospel. And for the venerable martyrs, that ended in the point of shedding blood. But you are no less a martyr if you have spent your whole life witnessing to Christ by the power of that spirit you received in confirmation. But as, as it's been phrased, that's a, it's not a martyrdom of blood, but it's a white martyrdom. You know, by analogy, look at the apostles. All of them were martyred except John the Beloved. But John the Beloved was just as much a martyr as they were. It's just that their martyrdom, their witness ended in blood. John's martyrdom ended in a peaceful death. But both bore witness fully with their life. And so to practically apply it to us today, we have to think of how the ancient Christians practically applied it as they were transitioning from times of persecution to protection from the empire and even Christianity being the state religion of the empire, where there was going to be no more physical martyrdom anymore, or rather martyrdom to the point of blood. No, they realized that the call to witness still applies at any point. We witness to the gospel in season and out of season because we are bearers of the Holy Spirit. We have received the seal and the anointing of that spirit. No one could be a martyr, whether to the point of shedding blood or of the white martyrdom that I've described, without the gift of the spirit in confirmation. And also, as some of the ancient fathers will say, like today's Saint, Saint Cyprian or Saint Augustine, they'll emphasize how also those who have been washed in baptism and received the seal of the Spirit in confirmation, they are only strengthened continually to the point of shedding their blood because they are always being nourished by the body and blood of Christ. It's because they partake of Christ's blood in communion that they are able to be strengthened to the point of bearing that witness that the Spirit is guiding them to. So, Put it for our day and age. You have been anointed and consecrated through baptism and confirmation to be not only the temple of God, but to be one who exudes the Spirit of God to the world. You are not just a temple of the Spirit. You are a steward of the gifts of the Spirit. And that is why we are all destined for martyrdom, not necessarily of blood, but maybe of peace. The daily sacrifices we offer, culminating in the Eucharist, all these that we show before the world are ways in which we proclaim his death and confess his resurrection, that the world can be saved through him. And so we are called to martyrdom. That is the Christian life. But once again, in our day and age, it won't necessarily end in the shedding of blood, but we are called to offer our whole self as a living sacrifice, as your spiritual worship. And that culminates in the moment in which we offer ourselves to God with the bread and wine on the altar. And then we receive the full offering of Jesus himself into us. Fully, his humanity and his divinity mingling with our humanity. That is the only thing that ultimately, that ultimately strengthens us, that nourishes us to give this constant witness. Yes, without being the temple, the spirit and baptism, and without having the seal and the gift of the Spirit and confirmation, we wouldn't be able to be empowered to give this witness. But we need 
food for the journey. We need viaticum, as the ancient Christians would say, food along the way, viaticum, the Eucharist. Without that, we won't have the strength to daily offer our bodies for the body of Christ, the church. So I hope this has been a meaningful um, podcast. I hope it shows that what Jesus said about pick up your cross and follow me, what Jesus said about he who loses his life will save it, applies to us in this very day. Maybe not to the point of a physical shedding of blood, but it's still the physical offering of our life and the spiritual offering of our soul. So it's not an offering of a portion of us, but an offering of the totality of who we are, even as Jesus himself offered himself in his entirety, his humanity and divinity for our salvation. And that is why this is the work of Christ in us whenever we do this. The work of a Christian is not their own work. It is the work of the Spirit of God in them. And that is why. That is why as we commemorate the holy martyrs who shed their blood for the faith, we don't commemorate a good work that a human being merely did. We commemorate how man, a man or a woman participated in the great action of God, the great drama of God, who displayed his unconditional love before the pagan crowds and who managed to convert and shake their hearts of stone and give them hearts of flesh, living hearts to the praise of his glory. So I just pray that the next time you partake of communion, when you draw near and receive the risen Christ fully into your being, that same Holy Spirit that you have within you from the washing of baptism and the anointing of confirmation may be stirred up and make you into a bright flame so that many may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father, as Christ said, that they may realize that it's not your work but it is the spirit of the Father speaking and acting in you. So have a blessed day, and may you live your life of martyrdom to the glory of God. Amen.